Hi, this is the third video in the playlist where we've been looking at the um, Edexcel higher tier calculator sample assessment materials. If you want to have a go at these questions yourself, if you follow the link below in the description, you'll be able to download it. The whole idea is I'm going to limit this video to about 20 to 30 minutes. Please do keep stopping and starting the video, have a go at each of the questions and then compare your solutions. Now we're coming towards the middle of the paper here, so things are going to get a little bit tricky from here on in. Okay, so we're going to start with uh, question 12 and in the last video we finished at question 11. Okay, so question 12 deals with um, something that on the surface of it looks extremely complicated and it is a little bit, there is stuff that you need to do to make sure that it looks okay, but basically we've got to work out the probability that one out of a group of 50 people like T. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a diagram which I'm going to split up into uh, circles like this. And the whole idea with this is it'll give us the ability then to put numbers into this diagram to suit the information that we've been given. Okay, so um, it's not that easy to take in, or, in order, but we'll give it a go and see what happens. Okay, so we've got 50 people and this is going to be represented by these three circles. Now, all 50 people like at least one of the drinks. So some people like tea, some people like coffee and some people like milk. Okay, um, and then it says 19 people like all three drinks. Okay, well that's going to be represented by this section in the middle here. That's going to be the 19 people that like it. And then it says 16 people like tea and coffee, but they don't like milk. So actually the 16 people then will fit into this area here. Okay. Right, so from there on in, it then you need to then start to juggle a little bit with the numbers. So it says 21 people like coffee and milk. Well, if they like coffee and milk, it's going to be this group in here. They might very well like tea, but if they like coffee, uh, sorry, big pardon, coffee and milk, then it's this whole group in here. Well, the difference between 19 and 21 is going to be two people. So actually, I need to put two people into there to make that group the 21 people who like coffee and milk in here. OK, then it says 24 people like tea and milk. OK, well, it's a similar sort of exercise. I've got tea and I've got milk and this group of people here like tea and milk. Well, 19 of them happen to like coffee as well, but we still need to have this group that represents the 24 people who like tea and milk. So the difference between 24 and 19 is going to be five, okay? So there's five people are going to go into there. And then it says 40 people like coffee, okay? Well, if 40 people like coffee, at the moment I've got this one, this one and this one that all like coffee. However, that doesn't add up to 40 people. It actually adds up to 37 people. So it's 37 people represented in here. So in that case, I need to add an additional three people then that like coffee. OK, so I've then got um, one person likes only milk. OK, so that's going to be that one person that sits in there. Now, if you add up all of these numbers, actually, you end up then with 46 people. So there's actually four people missing from this. Well, the four people that are missing from this are the four people who just like tea. OK, so I appreciate that's a little bit complex. Um, it's quite an unusual uh, question for GCSE. It does take a little bit of time to work through. Um, and then you've really got to take this information and work out the probability that the person likes tea. OK, well, all of these people within this circle actually like tea, and that's going to add up to 44. And remember, probability is out of something. Well, it's out of the 50 people that actually have expressed a preference for tea, coffee and milk. OK, so 40 out of 50, 44 out of 50 
is the probability that the person would like T if they're selected at random from this group. Now you could reduce that down if you wanted to, but that's perfectly fine. And on the mark scheme, that's perfectly acceptable. Okay, and then it says, given that the person selected, so out of the 44 people that are selected that like T, don't be very, very careful about this, selected at random from the 50 people likes T, so it's 44 people who like T, find the probability that person also likes exactly one drink, okay? or one other drink. Well, that's going to be the group that's represented by this uh, two groups here. So it's going to be um, one other drink is going to be, beg your pardon, it's going to be that group of five and that group of 16. It's not going to be those in the middle because they like two other drinks. They like milk and they like coffee. So one other drink is the group of 16, which that particular group like coffee. And then this group of five and that particular group like milk. So 16 add five is going to be 21. So it's 21 out of 44 for the probability that they also like exactly one other drink. Okay, I hope that's been all right for you. It is a little bit complex, but we are towards the middle of the paper now, so there's quite a lot going on with some of these questions. Okay, so let's move on then to question number 13. Hi, this is question 13. So I've just gone ahead and written a little bit out here for you. Um, there's a couple of things that we need to do to prove congruency. So basically what we're saying is that this triangle and this triangle are the same as each other. Okay, so uh, the notes I've written is that DC and CB must be the same because all sides are equal in a rhombus, okay? So therefore, what we're saying is that DCB is an isosceles triangle. Now, if that is the case, in isosceles triangles with two sides the same to each other, then it must also follow that this angle and this angle must be equal to each other. So we've got two uh, kind of comments we can make on this one, two comments like that. And then the final comment we would make is that it's given in the question that length dn equals mb and that's the final comment that's made in the in the text okay so we've got three conditions there and we're saying that uh, dnc must be the same as uh, bmc um, because we've proven with side angle side okay and i'm just going to write that out for you so side angle side so the side that we've got is all sides equal in a uh, rhombus which is dc equals cb the angle is going to be ndc and equals mbc and then finally the side here is going to be given um, in the question, which is dn equals mb. Okay, I hope that's all right for you. Congruency is something that just takes a little bit of time of working through just to make sure that you're okay with all of these things, but basically you want to try to prove three um, criteria to make sure that this is correct and both of these triangles in this particular case are congruent or the same as each other. Okay, so let's move on then to question number 14. Now in question number 14, we're back to dealing with algebra type questions and this particular question deals with um, iteration. So that's a fairly new topic for the new curriculum for GCSE maths, okay? And it says, uh, there's actually three questions on this and it says show the equation has a solution between zero and one okay well what we're saying is is when x equals zero we can plug that into this particular equation so we're going to have zero cubed plus four times zero okay and if we work that out that equals zero so basically it's too low for a solution of one. So that's too 
low, okay? And then when x equals one, again, if we plug that into this equation, I'm going to have one cubed plus four times one, and if I work that out, that equals five, which is going to be too high. Okay, so for, for this equation to equal to 1, it's going to be a number somewhere between 0 and 1 in order for that. Uh, so therefore the x value must be between 0 and 1. Okay. Alrighty, so we'll go on to part B of the question now, and it basically is a rearrangement, so it says show that this can be rearranged to give this. Okay, now there's a couple of different ways in which you can do this, but essentially what we're looking to do is to take one of these values of x and then rearrange it to look like that. Now if you can see here that What's happened is you've got four values of x here and a divide by four. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uh, make this value of x the subject of this particular formula. Now if I do that, I've got x cubed plus 4x equals 1. Okay, well, if I take this x cubed over to the right-hand side, I end up with 4x equals 1 minus x cubed. Okay, and then a value of x will be x equals 1 minus x cubed divided by 4. Now, don't forget that this means division by 4 of the 1 and also division by 4 of the minus x cubed. So I can write that as 1 over 4 minus x cubed over 4. Okay, and that's showing the equation. Okay, and then the next bit is the iteration formula, which we've actually derived here. And we can use this to find an estimate for the solution. Now, iteration, uh, as I mentioned before, is one of the newer topics within the GCSE curriculum. So it's worthwhile getting familiar with it. If you have a look on the uh, channel, there are some... There is a playlist on iteration. You'll be able to go through some of these questions for yourself. OK, what it's basically saying is we're going to start with this. OK, and that equals to zero. And then we're going to take that value of zero and plug it into this particular formula. So the next value of X I'm going to get is where I take this value of zero and I cube it and divide it by four. Now, if I work that out, I get one quarter, which is 0 0.25. So that's my first value. My second value is going to come about where I take this value of 0 0.25. And again, I plug it into this formula. So my second value of x is going to be 1 over 4 minus. And rather than having 0, as I did the first time around, I'm now going to have 0 0.25. So it's going to be 0 0.25 cubed divided by 4. And again, uh, it's going to take a little bit of calculation to do that. But once you calculate that, you should get 0 0.246. 09375. Okay, so um, that's actually it for this particular question, and it might be worthwhile if you wanted to just to write something like 0 0.2461, which is to four decimal places. So if you wanted to just round it off, that would be perfectly fine for this type of video. Okay, our first type of question. Okay, let's move it on then to question number 15. Um, I'm aware of the time, so I think what we'll probably do is once we've completed this question, we'll stop the video um, and then we'll move it on to the final video in this particular playlist, I think from question 16 onwards. Okay, so this particular one, uh, 17 men and 26 women in a choir, the choir is gonna sing. One of the men and one of the women are gonna be chosen to make a pair to sing the first song, number of different pairs that you can make. Well, basically it's each of the men paired with each of the women. So to make uh, the number of different pairs, it's 17 times 26, which is gonna be 442. So actually, in this particular case, you can make 442 pairs. 
And then it says, two of the men are chosen to make a pair to sing the second song. And Ben thinks that the number of different pairs that can be chosen is that. And uh, Mark thinks the number of pairs is that. OK, well, the 17 men. OK, so each man is going to be paired with another man. But of course, they can't be paired with themselves. So it's actually 17 times 16. Now, what's gone wrong here with uh, Mark is that Ben is actually correct because you have to divide by two because each person is going to be only paired the once. So 17 times 16 divided by 2 is going to be equal to 136. OK, so in this particular uh, question, Ben is correct. OK, all right, that's the end of this particular video. Um, we've gone on a little bit, so we're going to stop there and then we're going to pick up with question 16 in the next video in the playlist. I hope it's been useful to you. Please subscribe to the site. If you're not sure about anything, add a comment below. I'll always come back to you and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.